Let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's define what is the Internet of Things. Uh, a little background, before I came to Mobile Iron, I worked for a very small company called Cisco Systems. And the first group that I was in was the Smart Grid group. It evolved into the Connected Energy group, and then it became the Internet of Things group. And I was actually one of the architects for the security for the routers and the connected smart meters. So that's a little bit of my background. I came to Mobile Iron because in my mind, I knew that mobility and the Internet of Things, there would be convergence as far as security goes. And that is the biggest reason why I'm here. So what is the Internet of Things? It's the ability to actually connect everything that you can think of. Actually, Cisco's motto is, is the Internet of Everything. But in this case, it's the connection of things, and not necessarily to the internet, because it could be sensors, it could be those things that are gathering telemetry information and pushing it off to, in this case, the Raspberry Pi is sort of the, the internet of things gateway. And then in, in this particular demo that I'm gonna actually show you is we're gonna have the Raspberry Pi connect to our core. And this is all sort of off the shelf stuff. And it's still exploratory, okay? So I'll, I'll show you what it actually looks like when it's registered to core. Um, and then the concept of maybe being able to uh, put specific apps, and one of the apps being not only the apps that would be gathering the, the big data or the, the telemetry information, it is the, the idea that we can set up a tunnel from the Raspberry Pi to our sentry using our mobile iron tunnel uh, app and then push that data to the central monitoring station. Okay, so similar to the concept that uh, the CTO team is doing, what they're doing is actually, uh, it's a customized version of Linux that's running on Raspberry Pi. And they are actually also using our App Connect technology to containerize the, um, the apps that are uh, contained within the Raspberry Pi or the Internet of Things gateway and they're using App Tunnel to tunnel the uh, information to the, through the sentry and to a, uh, uh, a central monitoring station. Similar concept here, except we're doing it things that are off the shelf. So I, I just pretty much threw this up there as a segue to what the Internet of Things are. So the Internet of Things can, can pretty much touch every vertical out there, everything from health, to even your home, to vehicles. And there has to be a way for all this information to be gathered from all the sensors through a managed computer. In this case, it's, it's our Raspberry Pi. And again, being uploaded to the big data, the, the cloud computing, the, the, um, the central monitoring station is what I call it. Okay? So this is what conceptually, at the end of the day, what we're trying to achieve, okay? So we have our Raspberry Pi. For those who, who have not seen a Raspberry Pi, it's pretty much, it's a computer that costs $35. They actually have a Pi Zero, it's called Raspberry Pi Zero, which costs $5. But this little computer has more computing power than the computer that powered, you know, the Apollo space missions, you know, decades back. So it's actually a pretty powerful computer. It costs $35, you can buy it on Amazon. That's exactly what we did. And um, so here, what you have is through uh, a GPIO connection or through Bluetooth, because this thing supports Bluetooth. It supports Wi-Fi. Uh, not sure about NFC, but these are all transports that are attached to, here, wrong segue that. So all of these, think of them as sensors. And they're all connected to the Raspberry Pi, the Internet of uh, Things gateway, okay? And it's gathering all this information. So here, let me take a step back. So what I'm actually trying to do is have the Raspberry Pi, again, that's running Windows 10 IoT Core. And, and I don't know if anyone's actually played around with IoT Core. But basically it is, you can get the, the preview version for free. 
but as soon as you use it in your enterprise, you actually have to register it and, and pay a little bit of, of money. Uh, but the thing is, um, uh, it, well, okay. So uh, what I'm actually trying to do is, um, one of the things that I want to do at some point is to have the Raspberry Pi register to our mobile iron cloud uh, instance. But today, and, our, and the purpose of our demonstration, it's going to be registering to our core, our on-premise device. And I'm going to demonstrate that at the very end of this presentation. And then, again, at some point, be able to, OK? So th that information is being gathered by the gateway. And it's going to establish, hopefully, a, a mobile iron VPN tunnel to our sentry. And this is all conceptual, right? And then all that information is being analyzed at the central monitoring station. Okay, so this is what it is conceivably. The only part that I've gotten to work so far, and I've spent a couple of weeks on doing this, is to get this, the mobile or the uh, IoT gateway connecting to core. And that's gonna be my demo at the very end of this uh, presentation. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, move forward here. So let me take a step back. As you notice, I focused a lot on, uh, on the Windows platform. Part of it is because what I'm going to explain to you. So what we have here is iOS's uh, foray into the Internet of Things. It's called HomeKit. They announced it about two years ago. And really, it's more for the smart home. It's for home automation. And it, it can run on your iPad. It can run on your iPhone. There's really nothing uh, as, as far as comparing it to like a Raspberry Pi. So all of these, these um, HomeKit-enabled products can communicate with the HomeKit app on iOS. On the Android side, they actually have two. But the one that I'm actually talking about is Brillo. It's called Android Brillo. It is a uh, sort of an offshoot of or a, a lower version of Android OS. And their target market is also for smart home or home automation, but I, I'm thinking because I haven't had a, uh, the opportunity to actually download it yet and install it on a Raspberry Pi type of device to see if it would be something that we could put in an industrial IoT type of application. But today, what they uh, actually are, are uh, uh, pointing towards is uh, smart home, home automation. And ironically, they also have another uh, product called the Nest product. I'm sure some of you have actually heard about it. The guy that actually uh, works for Nest at Google it used to be my counterpart at Cisco. But um, Nest is something that's totally different than Brillo. And it's again, it's for home automation. It's, you've heard of the Nest smart thermostat. OK, so Nest and Brillo, how they talk uh, from device to device, how devices communicate with one another, it's a protocol called Weave. Both of them talk weave, but they're two different versions or two different types of weave, and they, they don't interoperate. So, and or Google has Brillo, and Google also has Nest. And maybe in the future, there will be some um, uh, integration between the two, but uh, at this particular point, uh, not, not as much known about Brillo. It, it was announced last year, so. Um, uh, don't have much information on there. And like I said, I haven't had the opportunity to actually install it on a Raspberry Pi type of device. So my focus is going to be a lot on, on uh, Windows 10 because they do provide, OK, so let me take, yeah, they do provide uh, things for home automation all the way up to uh, industrial IoT. So let me talk about, since this is a security and privacy uh, presentation, let me talk about some of the security that HomeKit comes with. So again, as far as um, how HomeKit communicates with the HomeKit uh, enabled uh, devices, it's called HAP, and it uses also Bonjour. And um, some of the uh, storage uh, security, it uses a very strong elliptic curve cryptography key, a very strong key, OK? Uh, I don't know if you guys had um, attended some of the earlier uh, sessions that we did, but I did talk about the differences between uh, RSA and elliptic curve keys. For the Internet of Things, elliptic curve makes sense because the keys are shorter. That means uh, storage and transport 
it, it, it doesn't require as much computational uh, um, power for elliptic curve. So that's why, as you see, there's a, there's a common theme for the Internet of Things. It will be using elliptic curve cryptography, okay? Um, 30, 72 bit secure remote password. And again, you can use Wi Fi, Bluetooth, that's low energy. And again, using uh, elliptic curve key, curve 255 19 keys. That basically is, it's a safe uh, elliptic curve, okay? Am I, am I losing people here? Or? Okay, let's keep going. On the Google Brillo side, again, it's based off Android OS and Chrome OS. Uh, it's based off of the SE Linux, uh, Mac, and Secure Boot. Uh, again, it uses Weave for the device-to-device -device communication. It's a JSON-based uh, device communication over Wi-Fi, and it does do, uh, uh, can do 802.15.4, which basically it's Zigbee or Bluetooth. Okay? So now let's talk about something that I've been spending a, a lot with, and uh, Mark's actually sitting right there. He's, he's part of the Windows team. So uh, this is something that uh, was sort of a brainchild back in February. Uh, we had heard that a Raspberry Pi that was running Windows 10 IoT Core could actually be managed by MDM. And, and certainly, Microsoft's documentation does talk about that. But their documentation doesn't actually tell you how to do it. It says, here's, here's the attributes you can configure. It doesn't give you examples. So to give you a background, so this started back for me back in March. I think I spent about a week trying to get this thing to work, looking at all the documentation, all the videos on YouTube. Couldn't find anything that made it work. So I ended up probably spending my first week just exploring all the different avenues. And then I spent the next couple of weeks after that trying to configure a provisioning package. And I'll, I'll demonstrate for you what a provisioning package is that can actually be loaded onto the Raspberry Pi that would actually be used to trigger to go connect to our core as, as a work access uh, type of enrollment. Are, are you guys familiar? Um, have you looked at Windows 10 at all and how you register uh, a Windows 10 device? to MDM, to our core. It's through settings, you know, accounts, settings, work access. You don't have to load a, a separate uh, client or an app like mobile at work. So, so that was some of the difficulties that I spent. And then I, I took a little break because I think by that point my, my, my brain was getting a little overloaded. So, uh, and I had to go up to Bellevue and do some stuff there in, uh, in Washington. So maybe if I, I figured if I stood close enough to Microsoft, maybe I could figure this stuff out. But um, anyway, so some of the security for Windows 10 IoT. Uh, it, okay, the unique thing about IoT is it has no GUI. It's command line, it's PowerShell. It does have a web interface, but it's very rudimentary. It's not the GUI that you and I are familiar with for Windows 10 desktop. It's not the GUI that even comes with Windows 10 Mobile, although IoT Core under the covers is actually Windows 10 Mobile. Okay, so there you have the first difficulty, right? Where in the command line do you configure this thing? So, um, and you can enable uh, encryption. BitLocker 128-bit is the default. You can also turn on 256-bit with XDS. Uh, AES encryption, and their protocol for device-to-device -device communication is called All Join. Okay, and it uses again the EC part is called elliptic curve. So you see that as a re recurring theme. Okay, for the uh, securing of keys and 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 whatnot. Okay, and a little more background about uh, Windows 10. What you have up at the top is Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. It's the same thing as desktop, Windows 10 desktop. And not only, on, if you're not familiar, Windows 10 desktop, you can load both universal Windows platform apps, which are the, the sandbox apps, the modern apps is what they're called, as well as Win32 apps. So that's what desktop is capable of, or IoT enterprise. And if you see some of the more sophisticated applications that you can use it on is robotics, you know, health industry, uh, a kiosk mode, right? Those, those types of applications. For Windows 10 IoT Mobile, it's, it's the phone. 
that's pretty much the phone. And at the very, very bottom here, you see the Windows 10 IoT Core, which is, again, the stuff you can get for free as a preview, um, and you only pay for it when you actually have to, when you use it as part of your enterprise. But again, very first thing, no shell. But it does allow you to load universal Windows apps, the modern apps, and these could be your own apps. And really, that's, that's what IoT Core is. It's, it's, it's really something you play around with. You, you also load their Visual Studio, and you create your own apps. Or you can go to GitHub and download a bunch of other apps that people have actually uploaded there for free. Anything from you know, internet radio to blinking lights to some of the stuff that I don't know if you saw in Sandeep's. He's, he's got cameras that's taking pictures. You know, so so uh, these are some of the cool things that you can do with the Raspberry Pi, right? But at the end of the day, the thing that I wanted to do was to get this thing registered. And this is what a Raspberry Pi actually looked like. So upon closer inspection, it has an Ethernet port. It has a Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is one of those, I actually got it working. But according to, to Microsoft, there, there was a list of supported hardware. And although you had to go through and uh, actually install different uh, versions of IoT Core, I finally got lucky, and I loaded one the other day, and the Wi-Fi automatically started working. So actually, my, uh, my Raspberry Pi is sitting on my bookshelf at home. It's talking to my AP, and right now it's out actually talking to our, uh, our mobile iron core. Okay. So this is the fun part, the demo. Okay. This is just the first leg. Okay. I actually just got this working about three or four days ago, and I think I was so happy I sent an email out to the team, and I was like, really? <laughs> it, it, was, it was actually a big thing. It was a big step, because uh, I, I call them little big steps, because we're finding out that once we uh, actually register the core, certain other things actually start working. So that's, that's kind of the cool thing. So let, let me actually uh, do this, because I actually have a video. See, actually I was going to try to do this live, but the Wi-Fi has been so spotty that I was afraid that I couldn't actually do this. So I actually created a video, and I'm going to share those, those videos with you, okay? So let me see if I can break out of this and try to launch the videos here. So the first video, let me kind of give you a, 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 a preface of the first video that I'm going to show you. It is showing you the Raspberry Pi Windows IoT interfaces. There's a couple of tools that they can uh, they provide. One of them is called uh, Windows ICD or Image. Uh, I forget what the C stands for, but it's uh, the ability to create provisioning package. You can create custom uh, images that you can load on the Raspberry Pi. And the thing about um, IoT Core and Raspberry Pi is these things you normally would build into a packet or a, an image and then boot it up off of that device, okay? But, and that's how everything was documented and that's the path that I followed. It didn't work for me. So I was trying other things and I ended up guessing correctly and being able to not only boot a regular image, but once that image was loaded in Raspberry Pi, I could actually go into the network share of the Windows running on the Raspberry Pi and drop the provisioning package into a specified directory, put it in, drop it in there, and reboot the device again, and that provisioning package actually took. It actually worked. That was the breakthrough moment. And again, it wasn't documented at all. Okay, it was just trial and error. So let's let's see if I can show you. So this first video is I'm, I'm just going to show you the interface for uh, Raspberry Pi, the web interface, uh, some of the tools that I use to actually get this thing to work. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh. Uh. Can you see that? OK, so they provide you with a tool called the IoT Dashboard. And it'll actually go out and, and discover any Raspberry Pis that are part of your network. Okay, and then one first things that I did, and I, I apologize, I, I didn't want to go back and show it, but you can actually launch their web interface. But this is what the web interface actually looks like. 
right? It's got a limited set of, of things that you can do. One of them is not being able to register to an MDM. But there's other cool things that you can do. One of the things is, I don't know if you could see, but I've already registered this Raspberry Pi. We have, a, we have an app called Apps at Work. That is our enterprise app store. That, got, that actually got pushed down to this Raspberry Pi. I don't know if you, you see it. The, I, I can share these videos with you afterward, too. Um, so here I'm just walking through the web interface of the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, again, not too many things that you can do there. And it, certainly if you're familiar with the Windows GUI, this is a departure from that. Okay. So again, I'm just showing you. Um, you can do audio. You can do internet radio, like I said. And then I, I, I want to show you the, the networking part and show you that, that down here, for, um, it's actually connected to my Wi-Fi at home. So that, that was in itself also a breakthrough because Wi-Fi is one of those very difficult things to actually get to work. Uh, I didn't want to run when I was, if I was going to do this demo, I didn't want to run this 50-foot cable, Ethernet cable here. But again, uh, IoT onboarding, they use all join, uh, that is device-to-device -device communication. So this is just kind of showing you what they provide as their web interface, web management interface. And they do allow you to, and that's what, what if you attach a, a monitor, what they call a headed uh, uh, configuration, this is all that they provide you, that little window there. This is what it shows. And I just wanted to show that it was connected Wi-Fi. OK, so this is the dashboard. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, you can use PowerShell. OK, although I was having some problems logging on. And, and it, is, it isn't the fastest thing in the world. But you have to log on to the Pi. And I did type the right password, but for some reason it didn't like the password. It told me it didn't. So I was going to try the other one. So I have a Raspberry Pi 3, and I have a Raspberry Pi 2. So I have two of them. Okay. okay and again, I'm logging on. I, I did uh, enter the same credentials, and it worked, but it, it, it just took a little bit of time for it to come up. But it's, it's your standard PowerShell, right? So that's pretty much the end of the, the first video. Okay, so that was just an introduction to some of the tools that they provide you. In the next one, I'm also going to uh, show you some of the tools that they provide you, and specifically the, the ICD, the Windows ICD, uh, customization and design tool. So let me go ahead and show you that one. So this is the Windows uh, image and customization uh, design tool. Okay, and this is where you can create not only provisioning packages. And I, I'll, I'll stop it at some point. Uh, it's kind of difficult to... Anyway, so here I'm actually creating a, a provisioning package. And I, I made it so that it's common to all Windows platforms. Because there is one specific to IoT, Windows Core IoT. All the ones that I tried, that one didn't work. And oh, it's very, very difficult to actually see. But I'm actually configuring the customizations that is required for this thing to, to work, for this Raspberry Pi to register to our core. So here, I'm, I'm defining the security policies. I'm saying the, uh, allow the ability to add a provisioning package to the device, uh, allow it to be removed. In this case, uh, I'm doing the simplest thing. That is, I'm not enabling encryption yet, and I'm not enabling the signing of packages. Every package, provisioning package, every app has to be signed by a, a trusted uh, signing certificate. In this case, I turned it off just for this demo. The last thing you have to configure is this thing called Workplace. That is the equivalent of work access. And here is where I'm defining the enrollments. It's asking for the UPN, user, uh, Universal Principal Name. In this case, it's my user account, jsaturnio at miacme.com. The auth policy, there's two choices. There is uh, on-premise, which is username and password. There's one also for certificate. I use uh, on-premise. You also have to know the uh, the URL for core, and it's not the standard URL. I don't know if you can see that. And I, if you want, I, I could actually show you the, the, uh, the videos. For some reason, I, I guess it's the uh, display here. It's not showing. It's very detailed. But here you have to know the full URL to core. Okay. 
There's, there's additional URLs you can define, but it wasn't required. Okay, so Microsoft gives you a bunch of stuff that you can configure, but they tell you which ones to turn on, or they don't tell you which ones to turn on, and they don't tell you which ones to turn off. So again, it was all trial and error. The secret is your password. It is your credential password. And what I did is I, I uh, created it, and then I exported this file that had a, a P, PPKG extension. Okay, so I saved that, and what Microsoft prescribed was that you make the, uh, this package part of the FFU file, which is the ISO file, and you bundle it together, and you use, and you load it onto an SD card, and you boot that up, and that didn't work. I think I spent about three days trying to do that. It didn't work. So in this particular case, what I did is I created the provisioning package, and now this is the, the um, the Raspberry Pi, I'm in the uh, network share, and I found it, the specific directory, you can't really see it, but it's Windows slash provisioning slash packages. You drop the P PPKG uh, file into that directory, okay? And then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the browser because I, I'm using the Raspberry Pi too. I have to log in. And all it is is that I have to reboot the Raspberry Pi. See, I'm saying power. There, there's a, there's a drop-down there for restart. So I restarted the, the Raspberry Pi. And here is the core. I, I, there was about five minutes that elapsed. And it, there is, it, it's actually showing in red. It's actually saying that I don't have a password set. And I'm like, well, I actually do. I have a password set. And that's why it's saying that DLP that loss prevention is not working. So that's the actual, the, the reason why it's red. But if you could see, the lockdown policies, they get applied. And the only thing that didn't get applied is my MIACME exchange, because I don't have a mail client on this. But all these other uh, policies or configurations actually got pushed down to the Raspberry Pi. One of them being uh, a VPN profile, a Wi-Fi profile, uh, it actually took the, um, the ECC cert, the elliptic curve cert that I was using for the VPN connection. So it actually showed that too. So I'm actually looping it again. I'm showing it again. But that pretty much was the effort. And, and this is the condensed version because I can tell you I probably built about 100 different provisioning package. Trial and error, trial and error. But again, if, if I can revert back to the earlier slide where I talked about the conception and again comparing it to what the CTO team is doing um, this is complementary right the beauty is that off-the-shelf items like IOT core that you can get for free you can buy a $35 Raspberry Pi um, and go through this provisioning package uh, or, or this uh, tool and actually have it registered to core and have core manage it. And, and the next step for us is uh, I want to load the mobile iron tunnel app within that web interface because there's a, a place you can actually upload an APPX file and see if I can provision that tunnel and configure it for always on VPN where that is uh, as soon as it senses a, a network connection, the VPN will just trigger and then collect all the data from all the sensors and so on, and then push it up to the sentry and to the central monitoring service. So technically, that is, that is the intent with, with this actual effort. And uh, in the beginning, my, my boss wasn't too crazy about me spending some cycles on this, but I, I think we've converted him. So uh, I think it holds a lot of promise.